and welcome back to the channel. Today for story time we're going to be reading The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. One of Edgar Allan Poe's most famous poems ever written. It's the one that everyone talks about and we're going to get to it. Okay, let's start now. The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, and of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping my chamber door, only this, and nothing more. Ah, distinctly, I remember, it was in bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow, from my box surcase of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here evermore. And the silken sad uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, so still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, tis some visitor entreating entrance at the chamber door, some late visitor entreating the entrance at my chamber door, that it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly, your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I open wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into the darkness peering, long I stood there wandering, fearing, doubting, dreaming, dreams no mortals e'er ever dreamed before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore, merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping, something louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice, let me see what there is, and this my mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, one with many a flirt and flutter, is there st that stately raven of saintly days of yore. Not the least obsessions made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with the mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door. Perched upon a bust of palace, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance of war. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing a bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door, with such a name as nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on that placid bust spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word did he outpour. Nothing farther had he uttered, not a feather then he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply, so aptly spoken, doubtless said I, what it utters is only shock and store, caught from some unhappy master, whom a merciful disaster followed fast and followed faster, till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope, the melancholy burden bore, of never, never more. But the 
brave and still beguiling, all my sad soul into smiling. Straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of the bird and bust and door, and then, upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking. Fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking, nevermore. Then I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowler's fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining, that lamp-like gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining with lamp-like gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then methought, uh, the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tuft floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee, respite, respite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh quaff this guy nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, Prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate, yet all daunted on the desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven bends above us, by that God we both adore. Tell this soul with sorrow laden, if, with distant Aiden, I shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word or sign of parting, bid or fiend. I shrieked up starting, get thee back to the tempest and the night's plutonian shore, leave no black plume as a token, that lie thy soul hath spoken, leave thy loneliness unbroken, quit the bust above my door, take thy beak from out my heart, take only from off my door, quoth the raven, nevermore, and the raven never fitting, a still sitting, still sitting, on the pla pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all been seeing of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul from out that shadow lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted.